Hello and welcome back to another episode of Critical Reactions with your host Brian. We're going to continue on with this week's theme of positive confusion, exploring songs that leave you a bit bewildered but wanting to explore more. Today we're going to be checking out something that's uh, actually just came into my radar recently. We're going to be looking at a band called Admiral Angry. I, uh, I literally just heard about this band this weekend, maybe on Friday, um, and I heard, I think, my first song from them on my own, and it's, we're already digging into another one, so, uh, yeah, let's dive into this and see what's going on with the track, Android. Such a massive sound. So a five against four polyrhythm, which carried over from our pass section. There's so much overdrive here that there is a four of feedback. Time signatures are interesting too because a lot of this is based on four but deviates every once in a while. Yeah, a nice little 6-8 idea there. Is that where we're going though? Or is this a 6 against 4? Actually it is 6 against 4 because our symbol work is 4.
one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four. <laughs> yeah. pattern is so weird. trickster okay so that final bit shifted over to a, a seven eight idea um, past the six eight so uh, uh, I, like I said I heard about these guys recently I figured this was gonna be angry I, I think that their band name is quite appropriate for the music that they make uh, it's very aggressive, um, and this song continues on with uh, the one thing I wasn't too fond of. I wish I remember the track that I listened to, um, but it's it's heavily focused on texture, rhythm, and riffs. It is not a song that cares too much about melody or harmony. Um, and they achieve this weight through this hyper focus right so texture we're gonna look at tone right the down tuning of these instruments the power of the bass the eqing of the low end on the drums the tom and the bass kick have a lot of presence that the snare and cymbals don't have and that's not to say that they don't have presence at all it's just they're not as as present as in the spotlight as the low end is our, our bass kick and our, our toms the whole song has this lower frequency resonance uh, in every instrument almost the vocals I think are the sole instrument that primarily dominate uh, a higher range and uh, they do sound a bit anemic compared to the rest of the group they just don't have that power uh, that the the song certainly favors the low end and that's what ends up feeling the largest in here and so we have a song that just by the production alone is hyper focused on these really large weighty low end hits and they're paired with these very sharp staccato hits usually several back to back there's always a break to sort of separate things out a little bit um and so we get these pockets of movement of quick very sharp movement accented by was it usually the cymbal work right because the bass kick are with the guitars and this is what 70% of the song is comprised of compositionally. Um, and it's just this, this constant low-end assault. And I, I use the word assault there particularly because it does lend itself well to the aggressiveness, the anger that the song feels like, at least to me. Um, and then we just have the screaming on top of it. And like I said, that's primarily the composition technique for, <clears throat> for this entire track. But they don't just stop there with the aggression. 
there's also an abrasiveness to the rhythmic, the metric element of the song as well. First of all, we do have shifting time signatures. Um, our very first rhythmic idea, our first riff, is several bars of four and then a bar of seven to wrap up the larger cycle. Um, I don't know how many bars of four were utilized before we hit the seven, but um, it always threw me off because it felt like we were going with the flow, very even four idea, and then we just kickstart into the next one early. There's a beat missing. Um, and, and yeah. I mean, it could also be written as several fours and then a three, but given the way that it's grouped up, it's usually a longer idea at the end of the phrase to loop us back. And it could be a bar of four and a bar of three, could be a bar of seven, but since it's one larger loop without, or one larger idea with no breaks in it, it is the largest idea that we have, the largest group of uh, attacks. Um, I, I think of it as in seven, so it all fits in one bar. The next section was, that was the five against four section. And this pattern actually continued into the next idea where we took a variation of this and we had a new rhythm underneath. Um, well, I guess it's not really underneath, is it? The five is the dominant one. It's what, it's what the bass kick and the guitars are doing. Uh, but we added a little bit of uh, rhythmic complexity to it. See, the first time we had this uh, really harsh, just constant, attack with no breaks around it um, and it was really difficult to get a time feel out of it because here's the thing right we're going to do a, a little crash course on on time feel you have a time signature and you have a pulse and that's going to be what your time feel is and times and most time signatures especially the common ones have generally utilized pulses to them so if you're in 4-4, four, four, you typically would accent 1 and 3 or 2 and 4, giving it a symmetrical feel. If you're in 5, 5-4, five, 5-8, five, uh, you could accent 1 and 3 or 1 and 4, basically having a group of 3 and then a group of 2, or a group of 2 and then a group of 3. It's not uh, symmetrically divided, uh, which makes 5 one of the time signatures. Actually, every any odd time signature is going to feel odd because it's not rhythmically uh, symmetrical, which gives us that sense of balance, which is why 4 and 6 and 8 and 12 are all generally picked for songs that are designed to feel uh, cohesive, and we'll use stuff like 5 or 13 or 11 or 9 for stuff that's supposed to feel a bit disjointed, uh, just because it's more difficult to break those up evenly unless you're going to accent in between beats. Um, but each, each time signature has a general, generally accepted or utilized time feel to it. What's really interesting here is that there are no accents. So there is no feel. There is no groove to latch onto. The, the accents give us, you know, you kind of... One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, right? You have that groove. Even when we talk about waltzes. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. And you have that, that accent point to really give you that moment of like a, a landmark. And the series of landmarks are going to give you your, your feel. You're going to be able to move and groove along with it and figure out what time signature it's in if, if you're inclined to do that. That doesn't happen here. There are no accents. There are no landmarks. I can count it out <laughs> and try to figure out what's going on, but they're not telling me what the feel is. It's kind of timeless. It could be in 1-4 for all I know. If it wasn't for the accented volume, or the, I should say the volume of the accents from the previous section, if you just gave me this, I could assume that all of these were accented because there is no volume change anywhere. And if everything's accented, well, you might as well be in 1-4, which is a really weird time signature. 
it means you have one quarter note to the bar. Your your bar is one note. Every bar has a single note in it, unless you want to split them up into like eighth notes, and then every bar has two notes. But it's such a small area, and there's no room for groove. Your pattern is you accent beat one, and there's only one beat in here, so you accent every beat, and if everything's accented, nothing is. It just kind of turns into this... Um, this flurry of, of notes without time, which is a, a weird thing to do. I've tried to write in 1-4, and even in my best attempts, I still had people saying, I felt it in 4-4, four, four, and that's honestly fair. <laughs> it's it's really difficult to write in a time signature that doesn't have time feel to it, and they did it very well. It wasn't until I looked into the background and I realized the symbols weren't doing what everybody else was doing rhythmically. The symbols were accenting two and four, but their two and four were not the same as the guitars and, and bass kicks two and four. And that's when I realized we were doing the four against five idea. I don't think at the time I had figured out it was four against five, but I did land on polyrhythmic uh, and I was trying to figure it out and we shifted to the next section. Um, <clears throat> but retro, retrospectively, yeah, retrospectively, uh, I'm pretty sure that was a five, four section because it followed a very similar pattern in the next section. And so five, four, if I count one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, you have to hit, you have to fit five beats into that. So it's going to be just a hair bit faster than that. Um, and poly rhythms are not... <laughs> Not my forte, especially ones that close. Uh, it's just, it's really difficult to count in four and like hit my chest in five that close like that. But if you can just imagine, it's just a hair bit faster. You got to fit just one more note um, in there. That's that's what they were doing. And if you want, go back and check it out. That was like at, uh what, two minutes and 20 seconds into the track, give or take, 2.30. Um yeah, just look for the part of the song that has no accents. Just a series of hits. Sounds like a machine more than music. Uh, sounds like a machine. More, yeah, and it's called Android. Huh. Uh, we'll have to dig. Well, yeah, we'll dig into all that later when we hit the lyrics. But, yeah. Um. So this five, uh, five against four idea. Five beats inside of a four four bar. And they continued this into the next section, but they didn't just do these rigid, equally spaced notes anymore. They changed it up and had uh, an interesting rhythm to it. We had quarter notes, we had eighth notes, I think we had some dotted notes in there, but it was still fitting five quarter notes worth of space into 4-4. Four, four. So we still had this five against four idea. Um... It was just a nice variation on it. And I think that was one of the last things that the band did. There might have been one more section, but if there was, it was just more of the same. More metric modulation, more heavy low-end aggression, more screaming. The outro of the song I thought was really interesting because they opted for... Well, I mean, on the surface, of course, it's a drum solo. I was trying to find a really nice segue into that. Uh, they opted for something heavily rhythmic and textural, completely devoid of melody and harmony. You see, a lot of the stuff that we had listened to up to, up to this point kind of danced between two ideas. Picking a note and doing a rhythm on it, or picking a note and a couple of the notes above it and below it, but, you know, just three or four notes here in this general area, and having some sort of melodic structure to go with the rhythmic one. So a lot of the song doesn't feel melodic at all. It feels aharmonic. But they really wanted to drive this point home of no melody, so they get rid of pitched instruments entirely, and we end up with just a drum solo. And I don't know what they were trying to do here, narratively, if I'm to understand this song is from the perspective of, of an android or about android-type music. 
you know, what kind of music would a robot make kind of idea, um, which is an interesting question to ask because AI music just had a massive breakthrough last weekend, weekend before, anyways, real recent, um, there's basically something, if you're familiar with uh, ChatGPT or anything by OpenAI, um, oh, what's the other one? There's an art one. Oh, I know there's there's Mid Midheaven. Is that one of them? I think that's Discord based. Anyways, the idea of AI making art, right? Uh, so we've had AI making conversations lately. That's ChatGPT. We have AI making pictures which oh dolly that's what it is um and now we have ai making art you can feed in some music and it'll spit some music out on the other side so i think it's really fascinating uh you know this was at least nine years ago maybe more i don't have a, an exact date for this album it's called buster but the video itself is from 2014 so it's at least that far uh, old. And, uh, you know, there's been AI-based music, or I, sh I could, I should say procedurally generated music. I think that's more appropriate for what music has been in the past when it's been fed into a machine and new music has been spit out. Um, but I don't know if they were you know, how much, how aware they were of this kind of stuff when they crafted this. And not to even if this has anything to do with that concept. I don't know. We'll get into the lyrics and see. Um, anyways, I was talking about the drum solo. I just went on a massive tangent. So the drum solo continues on with the stuff we had already seen. Metric modulation, polyrhythms, um, and a hyper focus on texture. But completely devoid of any melodic or harmonic components it is just the drum solo and i i find this interesting not just on a thematic course watching the song devolve in a sense um from rhythmic but melodic to purely rhythmic just removing that melody aspect the thing that at least in my experience a lot of humans latch on to uh, you know, if you take, if you give people music without a vocal line, even if there's a melody in another instrument, a lot of the mainstream listeners aren't going to want to listen to it in isolation. That's background music. That's soundtrack music, right? And um, I'm painting with very broad strokes here, right? I'm, I'm not trying to, to say that this is how people are or how you are in particular, but I, in my interactions, which is a very small pool of people, I'm extrapolating massively out here. So lots of room for error. Um, vocals are, are really important to people in music. And vocals typically carry the melody line. Melody is so important for people. Um, I think, I mean, because obviously we have stuff like uh, drum lines. Right. And if you go to a, an amusement park or a theme park or whatever, and they have their street shows that just pop up, you know, stilt walkers and stuff. There's always a drum section. You know, Disney has them. <clears throat> Universal has them. Uh, probably some other theme parks. I don't know. There's lots of them out there. Um, just people coming out and, and doing cool drum stuff. People like watching drum stuff, but I have always thought it was the visual spectacle. If you just put on a drum solo for somebody, I don't know that they're going to be as interested. So it really does, again, I'm coming at this from the angle of the title, which might have nothing to do with any of this. But the concept of making music for or by androids, not with human consumption in mind, is really interesting. Also, the polyrhythmic stuff going on in there is just bonkers. So, like, it could even be said that the drummer's a machine. <laughs> And then that wraps us up. And the song just ends with uh, a little bit of a, a fake out. It didn't seem like the song was going to end, and then it did. <laughs> um, but then it really didn't. We had an ending, and then silence. 
and then another ending, the same exact thing again. So that was interesting. Uh, I'm going to hit the lyrics here, see what's going on with them, and then we're going to wrap this up. A couple tidbits of information here. This is their only album. It did come out in 2009, uh, not 2014, like the video had stated. Uh, so it's a couple years more than that. I guess uh, was it 14 years, I suppose. Yeah, give or take. Um, so this is interesting. It um, it speaks to someone who allows a machine to control them. The machine is unfeeling, it simply does as it's instructed, and sometimes that instruction does make our narrator feel good. As stated, I'm high as a god, I must be, if they feed me. But it's about all of the negativity around what this machine does to this person. says what this machine that what's this machine that feeds me digesting feeling insatiably cooking up nothing in everyone my hands are too numb i'm high as a god though i must be if they feed me there is only one time the name of this machine is called out just android as the title suggests i think is interesting I feel like 09 might have been a bit too early for the algorithmic based web 2.0 social media stuff. But that's exactly what I feel about this. Machines that feed us. They make us numb, but they make us feel high. High as a god, even. They cook up nothing inside of everyone. They don't feel, they don't care, they just feed. Humans in particular. Um, interestingly, there's one line in here that I really love. It says, uh, the darkest sum of the fears of my fantasies. This very much feels like all of the negativity of social media, which of course is crafted by algorithms, which could be referred to as robots or AI. Um, and it was revealed not that long, well, I guess it was a few years now, uh, that Facebook's algorithm in particular primarily focused on negative interactions because they were the ones that produced the most replies and clicks and favorites and shares and whatnot. If you could rile someone up, they'll probably comment back. Positive inter positive stuff on somebody's social media feed had less interaction to it and since all they care about is impressions the negativity is what's stuck and that's what's created the massive negative loop that social media creates i'm sure no i don't think twitter uh ever came out and said that their algorithm is based on this but given that so much of the news cycle is negativity uh, and a lot of that comes from, tw you ever thought that was weird? I don't know how it is in other countries. U.S. news has a lot of f sourcing from tweets. It's the wildest thing. <laughs> this Twitter said this tonight. Oh, that's not news. <laughs> that's someone's opinion. Um, anyways. Uh, yeah, the whole negative cycle of it. And it's what the AI, the Android, has crafted for us. It's, uh... It, it puts me in an interesting place trying to analyze this because I am very directly reading this as a modern person, you know, a decade and a half ish uh, displaced. But I'm trying to remember what the landscape was at the time. Was was the song possibly written about something else? It doesn't necessarily need to be about how I'm reading it. And I wouldn't say that there's anything particularly in here that 
subscribes to that idea wholeheartedly. It is my reading of it, and I think I have a pretty good uh, set of uh, supporting ideas about why that reading might be accurate in some way, but it doesn't take in every line. And I don't even know if, like I said, it's accurate for the time. Which brings us to a really interesting topic I don't want to get into today because I got, I have another song I need to react to, <laughs> the special selection for today. Um, and, you know, I have other things, th thumbnails, comments, uh, get the description ready, get the timestamps going. Can't work. 24 hours a day either like I could I could be here a long time talking about this topic but anyways um what was I going with that oh the changing of songs what they meant then but what they might mean now and how no work of art is ever static I mean there's so many books from the past that were kind of seen as science fiction at the time maybe a worst case scenario in the future and now they're pretty much predicted it art is not static it cannot be it's always being reevaluated against what is happening today and i think i think that's what's happening here i don't think this is about social media but i think it's accurate it's scarily accurate in that framework Those are my thoughts on Admiral Angry's Android. This is where y'all come in. Let me know what you thought of it. If you enjoyed it or not, anything that stood out to you, anything you'd like to add on to what I said or correct me on, put that stuff down in the comment section. Above that, if you could, head into the description box, find that link tree link, head to here. You can find all sorts of stuff. The Discord server, my music, ways to support the channel, and so much more. Above that, if you could, like, subscribe, and ring the bell. I greatly appreciate all three. As I mentioned, we have a special selection uh, today as well. Otherwise, I'll be back tomorrow. We're going to look at some more positive confusion and, well, another special selection, as we do. <laughs> Until next time, remember to be critical, not cynical, of the music you listen to and have a fantastic morning, afternoon, or evening whenever you choose to watch my videos. Mm -hmm.